Hey everybody, today is resin day for me, so I'll be sharing in real time my process of resining my piece. Okay, I hope you can hear me okay with this. Um, what I do first of all is I lay out all my resin materials and so I've got a stir stick, Dixie cups, and art resin and gloves. I also have a mask that I'll be using because again, chemical sensitive, um, got to make sure that I'm all covered up. Uh, especially now since it's a quiet house and I want to keep everything quiet and nice and tight, um, I've got the door closed. So let me just show you a few things to start off with. Okay, and this is just how I get organized. Okay. Um, I just want to, you know, say that one of the greatest things that I've discovered um, this year was this tray. Um, I got it from Michael's. It's got compartments for my acrylic brushes. It's got compartments for other popsicle sticks and things. Um, I've got tools. Um, on this side and I think it's not very expensive and what's really great about this is that I can also stand up and work which ergonomically that works well now I've got my handy dandy <laughs> my handy dandy silly putty and the significance of this for what I have to use it for is it's going to be my third hand and um, before I show you what I do with this the first thing that we need to do is talk about the resin and mixing so as you can see this is equal parts of each bottle the black top and the white top and to make things easier for me, what I've done is this. I've gone out and I've got two pump bottles with the black and the white top corresponding to the white. I don't know if you can see that. The white over here and the black over here. And what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to pump right once with the uh, black and pump once with the white and that will be equal parts and then I'm gonna stir it up for a good three to four four minutes three to three to five minutes okay so let me just get my gloves and everything on and uh, and we'll start Okay, I've got my mask, I'm going to put that on, and I've got extra gloves. I'm going to try and talk through this mask. Put my gloves on, and uh, yeah, so hopefully you can still hear me. I'm a little muffly. I'll try to talk through it with my mask on. I'm actually thinking I might have to do a overdub for this, but uh, let's see what happens. Okay. Now, the one thing about using this pump method, I got these bottles from Amazon. And uh, this is the second batch that I've had. And all I did was I replaced the tops of these and kept the bottles. On hindsight, it's probably better just to replace the entire two bottles. Again, they're off Amazon. Um, I don't have any links for you or anything, but I'm sure if you just uh, search it on Amazon, you'll see, uh, you'll, you'll find them, okay? Now, what I'm gonna show you is that when you do a pump, it's been sitting for a couple of days, so when you do 
a pump of each. Okay, see how it just came up slowly? Um, there might not be enough through the tube on the inside to get a full pump, so you might have to, what is called, create wastage. So waste a little. And um, if you're going to do that, though, make sure that you have uh, more than one project going. Okay, so I'm going to do one pump of white now. Okay, now lucky for me, I was able to get equal of both amounts. Now, so that this doesn't tip over, I have my silly putty here. I can sink that in there and it's going to be my third hand and it's not going to it's not going to tip over and then I'm going to take this away here just to just so I can show you what's next Let me just take that away okay okay so I'm going to stir this up Okay, for a good three to five minutes is best. And um, just let me explain something to you. I glaze or I dome. I don't cast with this resin. So in order for me to show you um, what I'm going to be doing here, I'm going to have to... Um, basically let this sit and then come back and show you the the glazing process and then I'll have to wait until tomorrow so this might be a two-step video now let me explain when you are glazing what you're doing is you're painting a thin layer of resin um, on your piece Okay, and the reason that I do it is because I will be uh, covering a 3D uh, object with it. So it's got like three, more than three faces. It's got a front face, a back face, it's got an edge, and then it has the, you know, rigid edges around it. You'll see what I mean when I, when I show you the, the, um, the glazing and I'll explain it to you. So once this is all stirred up, okay, three to five minutes, I'm going to go away and, and um, continue to do this, but once it's stirred up, what you're going to do for glazing is you're going to leave your product, sorry, you're going to leave your resin just sitting there for half an hour to 45 minutes glazing you want the consistency of honey okay so I'm gonna continue to stir this out and I'll come back when I'm ready to do the I'm gonna I have to um I have to glaze first so I'm gonna continue to do this and I'll come back and I'll show you my process for glazing and then I'm gonna have to leave it for a good five hours so that it sets before I do any doming um, it's a really nifty way to get a nice even coat around a 3D object. So see you soon. I'm going to leave this for half an hour, 45 minutes, and I'll be back. Okay, now before I leave it, I thought I should show you this. Is it all stirred up? And it runs a little bit like water or like a thick milk. Okay, so what we're going to do is it has to be left now for half an hour, 45 minutes. And then I'll show you what that uh, honey substance that I was talking about, the honey uh, texture um, looks like. I'm just going to put that here, so my, my, my stir stick is going to harden, but 
because it's on the silly putty it is going to come off nicely and I'm going to screw this cup in so that I surround it by silly putty so it doesn't fall over. Gonna leave it for half an hour 45 minutes and I think I might also just take a piece of paper and cover it so no dirt or dust or flies which isn't bad this year. Get in. Okay, see you in half an hour, 45 minutes. Okay, so while we wait for another 40, I guess 15 minutes or so, 10, 15 minutes or so, let me just show you what uh, our resin is looking like so far. It's still pretty runny, so it's not really quite honey yet. But in the meantime, let me just tell you, talk to you about. Come uh, right back. Let's just talk to you about. Okay, what you uh, setting up your piece to be glazed, not not uh, um, domed, but just glazed. So here I have one of my recycled, upcycled um, wood pieces recycled upcycled wood pieces that has to be glazed and it also does have to be domed but um, as you can see I've got my go-to third hand silly putty holding it up and I just wanted to show you um, what you need to do and what you should be doing with uh, any sort of uh, Kato polymer clay. So here I have a, a round this was a cutter, a, a cookie cutter, like boop, 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 like that. Um, but if you're doing any sort of bracelets or something and you want to resin the piece, what you're gonna have to do is the very first thing is you gotta rough it up. So I have, this is one of my um, nail files. It's a, it's a coarse nail file to take off a lot of the nail quickly. So what you're gonna do is, and I'll do it over here so it doesn't get in my resin, you're going to have to rough up wherever it's going to be resined. You see that? Got to rough it up. So I'll do it over here. Roughing it up. Okay, you need to, the resin has to be able to grab something. So if you have really shiny polymer clay and you want to finish it off, with uh, with resin, okay, and I'm just wiping off the excess. But if you take a look, I've roughened, see, smooth, rough, and I'm gonna resin that part, okay. Whoops. I want to be able to dome this part, okay. So this is a 3D object, so I'm gonna have to roughen that up. Take all that edge off, take all this edge off, and roughen, roughen up my shiny Kato polymer clay because I left it in really a really long time. That's what happens when you leave Kato in the oven for a very long time. It doesn't burn, it just gets really shiny. See that shine? See shine? Okay, which is which is a great for a finish, but I'm just doing this so I can show you how I'm going to finish this piece. So we're going to glaze that bit and I'm going to get my handy dandy silly putty to hold it. So I'm just basically making a little holder for it. I'm going to stick it to the top of my table. Whoopsie. Okay. My hands are free. And uh, let's just see how our resin is coming along. I don't have any gloves on, I just want to see how long how it's coming along. Getting there, it's thickening up, look. All right, getting a little thicker, but not quite the honey consistency yet that I want, so leave it for a little bit, come back in a few minutes. 
Okay, so let me just show you here. So here is the honey. I don't know if you can see that. Let me just hold it up a little bit. So it's a more of a honey consistency, right? The drip is slowed down. You can see actually on the, uh, see that? More honey like. So I've got my gloves on because I'm now I'm going to start to glaze. Now, let me just do, I'm going to choose, you know what, let me choose what brush, this brush here. Okay, so it's like a medium with brush. And I'm going to do the Cato Polymer Clay ring first. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the dots. So I drip, drip, drip. I didn't do the whole thing, just this uh, drip. And then I'm going to just, from one side to the other, I'm just going to join the dots. Okay, and it's a nice pull. You can really feel that it's, you know, sticking. It's a thin coating, okay? It's not about doming right now. It's just about a thin coat. Now, because technically this is a 3D object, it's got a surface here, it's got this ridge, which is another surface, and then it's got the back surface and the front surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring over some of the resin over the edge. Okay, although the front surface is very thin, I'm still bringing it over the edge. And the reason I'm doing that, it's almost like cutting in, like painting. When you cut in a room, right? So you're just going to bring it over the edge a little bit. Now, this is going to take a good five hours to get to a hard tack finish. Okay, and a hard tack means that when you touch it with like a you no know, popsicle stick or something like that, it doesn't, you know, it's hard to the touch, but it still has a little bit of a tack. Okay, so you've got to leave that for five hours. The one thing that I want to say, most importantly, is is that if you're in a place where it's incredibly hot, like we had that uh, that heat wave. You're going to have to get to your resin fairly quickly. So this took 45 minutes. I would say get to your resin at about the half hour mark and check for that honey consistency. Now let me just show you my upcycled, recycled wood product. Okay, so my front and back surfaces. The hair there, I don't know how. My front and back surfaces are flat. Those are going to be domed, but the actual ridge is going to be glazed. So let me just show you again. Okay, um, I might have to change my, I'm going to change my brush. Okay, I'm just going to put that here for a second. And I changed my brush to a smaller brush because the actual width of my edge is quite thin. So I've got this little guy. So and I'm just going to do again. See that gooey? It's gooey like honey. So I'm just going to go a drip and a drop and a drip and a drop and a drip and a drop. Okay because it's a thin coating so I'm just going to join all the dots and I'm going to do down the side. And I'm going to do that ridge, do that ridge, and it doesn't matter actually how, uh, what it looks like on the front surface or the back surface when you bring it around and to sort of cut it in because you're going to dome over it. Okay, does that make sense? It doesn't matter. You can be as messy as you want. Now I can't see. I'm just going to hold that down. 
right? I'm not putting any more resin on it. I'm just folding it over. See that? No more resin on my brush. Now, now I'm going to do my middle part with a drip and a drip. And I'm going to do the same thing, bringing it over the edge. Now, the only reason you do this is if, you, if you're working with a 3D surface, so more than, you know, one edge. If you're just going to dome the top of an item, uh, of, a, of a, one of your pieces, you're just going to dome the top, just dome it the way that you normally do it. Okay. This I have lots of edge edges. If you want to count the the ridge here, like this ridge here, I'm going to count that. How many surfaces do I have to? It's like an edge and front back surface, and then three and four. So. One, two, th five. Five. Okay. Now I'm also going to do down. Okay, I'm glazing. I'm not doming, guys. Glazing. Painting on some resin. I'm just going to do that. Okay. Again, I don't care how the front and back surface look at this time because I'm going to dome over it. And I might even cut in a little bit on the side as if I were doing a room. Cut it in. Cutting it in. Like I would a room. Oh, excuse my bosoms in your way. <laughs> right now I'm doing the side down side. Now there, I didn't do a drip and a drip and a drip. I just got impatient and did one whole thing. I hope I don't regret that. Right, taking a little bit from the top and going over the edge. La la. Right? Now, here's the thing. I probably should have had a whole bunch of other pieces set up to do because now I've got all this lovely resin in its honey state, right? That's still its honey state, going to waste. Okay? So, that one pump of each side would have given me a good, oh my god, let's just see. One, two, three, four, five, maybe four at least, minimum. Four of my upcycled, recycled wood product. Okay, so we're going to let this dry. We're going to let it dry for a good five hours. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to get to it today. I might have to wait until tomorrow to redo the other side. I'm going to flip it. Okay, flip it 180 degrees. Again, guys, you don't have to do this. This is how I do my process. It's longer, but for me, it's the results are fantastic. Okay, so just to let you know, you do you, but this is just an alternate way of tackling 3D you know, style, uh, 3D style, you know, product that just doesn't dome one side. Okay, so now that I've wasted that, <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, take a piece of plastic or silly putty, plasticine, take a piece of silly putty, okay, I'm going to wipe off all the excess. I'm just going to do it on this paper. Right. And I'm gonna take a little bit of silly putty like that. Right. I'm gonna wrap my acrylic 
uh, paintbrushes in it until tomorrow. Same thing with this. Any silly putty that's on this, uh, or sorry, any uh, art resin that uh, lingers on this piece, a great big piece here, this is going to peel off because it's uh, silicone, right? It's like silicone. So then I take the big one as well. I'm going to wrap it up. Come ça. French. Come ça, like this. And I'll leave it. Okay? Same thing with my stir stick. Well, I can just get rid of my stir stick, but I just got to leave the stir stick. <laughs> okay? And uh, we'll finish this up tomorrow. Um, see you soon.